I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer, really though, specializing for just this moment in time because we have a strategy that is based upon repeatable patterns. And I'm really hoping that at this point you can see how critically important it is to hold gold and silver in your physical possession. And we had a couple of questions that came up and I'm sure that if one person has these questions, a hundred people do. So I'm just gonna jump right in to Jimmy's question and he says, <clears throat> instead of targeting a 2% inflation level and raising rates to head off price pressure, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that the central bank would aim for an average of 2% over time. So that's the change that we talked about last Thursday, the, the monetary regime shift, which would let inflation run higher. I understand this to mean that the Fed will need to move real interest rates to negative, but wouldn't that be deflationary to government bonds? Well, here, look, the, the new regime is really setting up because I think, and of course I can't prove this piece, so let's be clear on that, but I think that the Federal Reserve knows full well that they're going to lose full control of inflation because they have no tools left. So by saying, well, we're going to let inflation run a little bit hotter, that way, when inflation starts to spike, they come out and say, well, remember, we're going for an average of 2%. Now, I am going to be talking about this more in depth on Wednesday, but isn't this all deflationary? Now, I think, Jimmy, what you mean by that is that price is going down. And yeah, all of this is deflationary and keep in mind that there is really only one way to fight deflation and that is with inflation and once those prices start spiking up because they've given the well everybody it's a universal basic income so no means testing everybody's going to get this free money in those Fed now accounts so that the Federal Reserve can see immediate reaction and response to their policies, which is something that they've been trying to figure out forever. So let's see, wouldn't this be deflationary to government bonds? So when they lower rates, okay, this is the way bonds work, right? When it, and this is the interest rates and this is the bond principal and this is when they issue them. So this would be shorter term and then you have longer term out here. Okay, when interest rates go up, the principal value of the bond goes down. When interest rates go down, so into negative territory to your point, Jimmy, the principal value of the bond goes up. So when they push interest rates negative, really what they're trying to do, and they, and they said it pretty clearly in this announcement, which I'm gonna go into in more depth on Wednesday, they were basically telling the stock market that we are going to support it because if interest rates are negative or even at the levels that they are right now, they're not particularly an attractive investment. Now for a while, as they, were, as they were pushing those interest rates down, even though there were some bond defaults and some different hiccups, et cetera, the increasing principal value or on those bonds hid the default rates. But we're coming into a lot of defaults now. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do it. The, the con game is falling apart. Uh, would the Fed use another one of their tools, which is yield curve control of government bonds? Absolutely. Even though they're saying they're not going to do negative rates, they're not going to do yield curve control. They don't really have any choice in either one of them. And uh, could you please explain your yield curve control and, and how this will help the Fed reach their inflation target? 
Well, let's talk about what yield curve control is. And we've talked quite a bit over the last couple of years about inverted interest rates, which is when short-term rates are higher than long-term rates. And that is an indication. It happened um, December of 2018. I'm pretty sure it was like December 4th or 14th, something like that of 2018. And then, of course, we saw usually, um, on average, about 18 months later, we go into a recession. Well, this time was really no different. So what, what uh, Jimmy is asking me is yield curve control would be in them buying or selling bonds to move the interest rates on the in shorter, intermediate, and long-term bonds so that the yield curve does not invert. So in other words, you have longer term rates higher than intermediate term rates, which are higher than short term rates. But all of this is so incredibly artificial and it's too late anyway. We are already in the deepest, if you wanna call it a recession, we, we've got, we've really got a tale of two economies, like we have a tale of two markets where you have a small group that's doing extraordinarily well, but you've got most of the people out there not. And the same thing would be true, you know, for the bonds. So let's see how this will help the Fed reach their inflation target. Well, what they're talking in yield curve control, that is specifically they are buying and selling different maturities on bonds to push interest rates up or interest rates down. And the more money they create to do this, the less value in terms of purchasing power that the money that's already out there has. And so by the way, even though they've been lamenting and oh my gosh, it's just awful that they have not been able to hit that 2% target, so they're gonna change how they do it. The reality is, is that our cost of living has gone up dramatically since the Fed took over and took control of, of um, yields and interest rates and inflation anyway. And we're talking about 1971, when Nixon closed that gold window and handed over the, uh, the full ability to, to manage inflation to private central banks. And we've lost most of the purchasing power. In fact, truthfully, officially we're at like 98% a loss of purchasing power. But you know it's worse than that because they jury-rig all of the numbers to make things look like it. So, you know, that's what's going with, on with that. I will talk more in depth about it on Wednesday but I think that they're getting us ready for the loss of control that they know is going to happen. They have to hyperinflate away all of the debts. They have to justify the pain that we're all about to feel to finish the, the new world order, the global financial system reset that everybody's now talking about openly. And um, Chalon asks, in or salon, I don't know if I butchered your name, please forgive me. But in speaking with an advisor from ITM, I remember talking about holding precious metals enough that would be able to sufficiently cover, yes, taxes and insurance for land that was completely paid off and owned outright. Yep. Do you have a recommendation of how many years worth of taxes and insurance to have backed up and saved with precious metals? Well, it's kind of hard to know exactly how long this whole thing is going to last. But technically speaking, the phase that we have entered lasts a uh, half as long as the second phase. So, you know, you need to talk to your advisor and make sure that it's comfortable for you. But I have personally uh, 10 years or so worth of that kind of uh, gold, the barterable gold for taxes. You can also do it with silver, but I like to plan for 10 years. Um, that may or may not be suitable for you. So again, talk to one of the consultants, talk to your consultant and discuss it, but that's what I like. 
uh, with the digital dollar and FedNow accounts, would you see it wise or necessary, necessary to use FedNow accounts in limited ways? Absolutely. Or do you think they should be stayed away from until we have no choice? Well, they're going to make it so that we have no choice. And they're also going to make it that it's really attractive. And so how easy would it be to take that universal basic income, 1,200, 2,400, 4,000, whatever that number is going to be in terms of digital dollars and put them in that account and when they do go to negative rates, you're watching that principal decline. So, um, you know, would I see it wise or necessary? Here's what I see wise and necessary. You want to hold physical gold outside of the system because you can always convert your gold into any currency, whether it's digital dollars or paper dollars or foreign currencies. So where I used to think in my personal strategy that at the end of this reset, when we had a currency that was a lot more stable, that I would convert a chunk and just keep my dynastic gold or and then some over here for protection. Well, that's not the way I feel about it now because I definitely don't want to go into digital dollars. I'm going to be forced to use them. We're all going to be forced to use them. But I would rather convert my gold into the digital dollars as I need them rather than allowing them to attack my principal because that's really what the digital world enables. You know, they can have an unlimited number after we go to point. Uh, and then let's see, I'm, oops, sorry, there was one more part to that question. I'm really interested with any new information or insight you would have on the digital dollar fed now accounts. And again, I'll be talking about that Wednesday, but I'm paying close attention. And so this is, I'm a hundred percent certain this is not the last time or even this week is not going to be the last time that we're going to be talking about this because we're going to watch this evolve. We have absolutely positively had a monetary regime shift. And I got to tell you, in 1971, when it happened, I was, you know, like 17 years old. So I was old enough to kind of feel the energy, but I didn't know that anything had happened or anything had changed. Neither did my parents or my uncles or my aunts, you know, and, and my uncle Al, who had safes full of gold, the pre-33 coins, you know, they, they'd come over on a Friday night and they would play poker, penny poker. And, you know, I would listen to those conversations and I never heard them talk about that. So my bet is the general public had no clue. Even when Nixon came out and said it, it didn't seem like that big a deal. Just like what happened Thursday, it didn't seem like that big a deal. I mean, the markets were, were talking about lower for longer. They're going to keep interest rates down. But this is all supportive to make the stock market go up because that's what people pay attention to. And they think if the stock market's going up, then it must be okay. And keep in mind all of the retirement plans, all of the derivative bets. I mean, I mean, this is a mess. This is really, this will not end well. You can mark my words on that. And uh, Dan asks, you speak of possible reset of the dollar for bank assets to be one for every thousand. Does this mean that a $10,000 mortgage will be reset using the same correlation? Typically not, no. Mortgage will now be $10 for 10,000 mortgage balance. Again, you know, typically no. Things do reset, but, per, but private debts like a mortgage or a car or, or student loans, not gonna, like, not likely to be reset. Just the value, just the nominal value of what you're holding. And, um, and one more, and then, then that'll be it for today. And Stephanie asks, I live in India and was wondering about what I need to watch out for if I'm traveling to the U.S. with gold and silver. You know, you might want to call some of the consultants that have had a better experience with this. But if you're traveling from India, 
I'm, I'm thinking that the way that you're traveling with your gold and silver is in jewelry form. And obviously I don't know for sure, but we get to travel with gold. It's going, if you were going into China, I would say you better make sure that you declare all of it because they don't allow any gold to leave their country. So you want to declare it in and you want to declare it out. But in the U.S. at this point, you don't have to declare uh, your jewelry, but there are limitations to how much monetary gold you can bring in. So I would recommend that you give us a call at 888-696-4653 because I know that some of our consultants have had actually quite a bit of experience with their clients um, going back and forth to different countries with gold. And, you know, this week I'm going to be talking to Victoria Scholar at IGTV, which is a new one for me. So I'm very excited about that because I have no idea what she's going to ask. And next week I'll be on with my friends at Silver Bullion TV. And I can tell you very, very intelligent questions. That was, this will be my second time on there. And um, I was quite impressed with the level of knowledge and expertise. And I'm, so I know that's going to be a great conversation. If you have any more questions about this or anything else, just send them to questions at itmtrading.com and visit our blog. That's where you find all of the links and the images and blog posts that I personally write on itmtrading.com forward slash blog. But without one doubt at all, it is absolutely time to cover your assets. And you do that with the Wealth Shield, which is physical gold, physical silver in your possession. Because quite honestly, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So until next we meet, Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.